and Mr. Pellish here. Hello, and I'm going to give you a book response on Girl on the Ground. Written by Morris Glatzman and read by Simon Fair. Today I'll be reading to you chapter... Chapter 8 to chapter 9, which is page 46 to 51. But first, let me give you the good old recap. So, the story is basically about a girl named Bridget, and she is not an ordinary girl. So, she's part of a crim family, a criminal family. And her parents decided to give Bridget what they haven't had, a rich boarding school. So, her parents and her uncle took her to this rich boarding school, and after a long tour from her headmaster, or say, principal, she got to go to her boarding room. But first, let me tell you why Bridget is part of a crim family. Her parents and her family do very bad things. They do an illegal import from other countries. Yes, illegal imports. And back to the recap, she got to go back to her boarding school room. When she opened the door, she found out that she was going to share with the room with three roommates. The roommates are Vuve, Antoinette, and Chantel. Those are the three horse-loving roommates. So, after a few minutes of greeting and introducing Bridget to those three horse-loving girls, one of those girls lost their key to the suitcase and they couldn't open it. And then Bridget remembered this thing from the past. She remembered that if you stick a pen into the key keyhole of the suitcase and bash the suitcase lid, in a certain way, 98% of those suitcases will fling open before you say, Sorry ma'am, your suitcase is permanently locked. So, Bridget did that and suddenly realised what she had done. A, let's say, criminal technique to, um, let's say, pick locks on suitcases. So, after looking at the horrified faces of the three horse-loving girls, she ran out of the room and into the car park. And to her horror, she saw a police car zooming towards the school. So she ran for her life and peered through a wall to see at the car park and look at that police car. To her surprise, the police car only held a driver, of course, yes, and a small boy that belonged to the school. And he walked all the way to class and all those things. So she just went back to room and slept for the rest of the day. The next day was the first class of the first time she's ever been there. So her teacher was Mr. Lamb and before the class even started, she had a letter from her brother who was also a criminal and was in jail currently. She had the letter and two burly big muscle two boys came into class and saw her and said, Hey, my mom doesn't write me any letters. Can I see some? And then Bridget's like, No, no, no. And then the two burly boys came and bullied her, yes. Uh, but then Menzies, the little boy from the police car yesterday, came in and rescued... Um, Bridget stunned those two boys. He took Bridget's letter and gave her another letter. And then when Mr. Lamb came in, he saw the letter and took it from her. He read it and it said something about a detention centre and two little kids and their parents talking about being in a detention centre. Yeah, I said that. So when he read it, he was like, oh, did Menzies give you this pen pal from a detention center or something. And Bridget was confused. She was like, what? And after that, after uh, after class, it was lunchtime. And at lunchtime, she ran all the way to 
Minzy's room to thank you for the rescuing of her litter. And when she came back to his room, she found him and thanked him and they became friends from that point on. So, the day after that was family night, which means that all the parents and families of the students of the rich posh school came and gathered with their children to talk and be with them for a few hours until they had to go back to their houses. So Bridget's parents were there, but not Menzi's parents. They weren't there, which made him quite sad. And after a few hours of drinking and eating and talking to um, children, Bridget's parents came and saw Menzies all alone. So they decided to invite him to Bridget's father's part birthday party on Saturday. And Menzies happily agreed, but Bridget didn't want to. And because she has a very good reason. And that reason is that um, she's, she's part of a crim family. As I told you at the start, a criminal family. So yeah, and that is where my story from chapter 8 begins. This is chapter 8 of Girl Underground. Scene. Bridget is in her room with her roommate and they are sleeping in their boarding school room. <sighs> this Russian top-notch blending machine is one of the best device in its current... What? Can I hear that right? Really, mate? Hello, mate. These are really strong blades. These are Russian technology. They are made to blend beetroot, cabbage, and carrot. Will you take a moment? Sure. Take a... Go! Good day, gorgeous. What are you doing here, Uncle Grub? Your dad have this great idea about delivering a gift to you. But since he's at the dock, he's asked me to do it. It's not safe. We're a crim family, remember? Are you even listening? Oh, I'm sorry, my dear. That's the one thing with Russian blenders. You have to check them for rust. What are you talking about? Oh, that's the gift. The gift is that I give it to the teachers. The teachers will like you and they will help you to fit in. There are five more minutes before the teacher will come into the dining hall. Help me! Bridget, a moment please. Who are you? Oh, I am Bridget's uncle. I would like to say this opportunity to thank you for letting my niece have the opportunity to study at this school. And for that, I'd like to offer you a gift. The Russian blenders. This is a little irregular, but I'll take it. Thank you. Okay, Bridget, my work here is done. I must go.
uh, in the dining room. Why are there blenders on your table? This is the end of chapter 8. This is chapter 9 of Girl Underground. Scene. Bridget is walking to Menzi's room and thinking about how she would say Hello. how Hello. her father's birthday party on Saturday is cancelled. Centers. Here, how about you have some breakfast? Hey, listen to this. This is one of the people from the detention centers. The Australian government say we are queue jumpers, but it's not true. In Afghanistan, everyone made queues, except for the people who were shot. In this detention centre, we also queue for soap, for food, and for water. People with headaches have to queue for pills, but we don't complain because if we do, the guards shout at us, and that's not good for the people with headaches. That's awful. Anyway, do you want to hear some more of the letter? Sure. Okay. It says, I am sorry if I get some of these words wrong, Menzies. The kind of person here, the kind person here who helps me write this letter in English is also very sad. His wife and two daughters drowned on the boat trip to Australia. Um, sometimes his tears fall on the letter, as you see right here. He says sorry about the wet marks. <laughs> Is he the same man that sent you the letter yesterday? Yeah, he is. Um, but, except, he's not a man. He's a kid. Oh, yeah. His, his name is Jamal, yeah? And he's the same age as us. That's impossible. Kids can't get locked up. But there are lots of them in these detention centres. And Jamal's also got a younger sister, Bibi. And she's had a toothache on and off for the last month. And this is more of his letter. The people who run this detention centre don't give the guards a birthday present on their birthdays. No wonder guards are often bitter and cross. So me and Bibi are making presents for them. I'm making soccer balls out of plastic bags and string from my blanket. Bibi is making little mountain lions out of dry grass and dirt and spit. We hope this will give us a happier detention centre and cheer mum and dad up. They are very sad because the Australian government won't tell us how long our prison sentence is. Oh, yeah. What did they do to get locked up like that? Oh, that's going to be a long story. Oh. Oh. These are all the envelopes from Jamal and Bibi. Yeesh, that's a lot. Um, well, to answer your question, they got locked up because... The government in Afghanistan tried to kill them. They tried to blow up their house. Why did the government blow up their house? 
are the family big criminals? Well, they're not really big criminals. Their parents ran a school. Mm, it's all very shocking. Yeah, they ran a school. And they also tried to escape Afghanistan. They tried to get on far, far away from Afghanistan. So they tried to come here to Australia. Unfortunately, they didn't have a visa or any permission to get in. So they had to go to a, a detention centre from one place, then into the desert in Australia. Yeah, they're in the desert right now. Yeah, pretty sad. It must be a mistake. The government might have got it wrong. The dad is in the, is in the government. Can't he do anything about it? Uh, I've always tried. But when I ask him, we just end up arguing like this. He says that, um, what does he say? Um, he says that I'm too young to understand about this stuff. And then I say, a three-year-old knows more than you to free these refugees. And then my mum butts in and says, you shouldn't, uh, you shouldn't, um, you know, argue with your dad like that. And, you know, it's really hard trying to get them to listen over the phone. Last week, my parents went on this trade mission overseas, so I didn't get to stay with them on the holidays. So what did you do on the holidays? Stay here? What are you thinking? Who stays at school on the holidays? I don't stay at school. I go with my uncle and auntie who live on a farm. Well, they don't like me. We argue a lot of times. My uncle says that uh, those refugee boats that come to Australia should be sunk. And we've always argued like that. And Dave, my bodyguard, yes, my bodyguard, was in Canberra last week as well. So he was in Canberra with his mum. So since he didn't get to drive me to school, like you seen yesterday, I've been driven to school in a police car. What? He doesn't spend holidays with his parents? Well, it's not my parents' fault. They do really important work for the government of Australia. Then why did... The state. The local area. I'm really proud of them. And, you know, I just wish they had a bit more free time. Mm. My parents really like you, Menzies. Yep, they really do. They're, re they're really looking forward to seeing you on the party on Saturday. Thank you, thank you, yes, I like to go, yeah. That heals me from my sadness. Okay.